<sighs> driving me to drink. Mm. Just driving me to drink. Another one. Another one. A few days ago, I did a video about how Just Blaze, Just Blaze of Rockefeller fame and Exhibit C and you know that what that 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 fire beat the the best Just Blaze beat might have been that beat he did for Street Fighter. Oh my God, it's unrappable. You can't rap to the beat, but it's a fire beat to be playing in the background. But um, I did a video about how Just Blaze is a beat thief, and of course, of course, you always have these moronic individuals called fans. In the comments talking about, he didn't steal the beat. He was paying homage. Um, how is stealing someone else's material paying homage? He stole the beat from Black Moon. The beat literally came out in the same year. But this is monkeys on the internet. You see, YouTube has tried to mess with my... Uh, monetization so I can't cuss how I want to I have to I have to use code words at least not two minutes in hit the like button share this video subscribe to the channel Jay-Z Rockefeller I made a video Rockefeller kind of has a history of biting kind of and it's led by Jay-Z and I <laughs> I said it before I say it again Beyonce is the male Jay-Z Destiny's Child was stealing, ripping off TLC songs. <laughs> they were ripping off the Spice Girls. I mean, just I gotta do a history of, of Beyonce's history of, of biting. She's so she's so overrated. Oh good lord. But um Jay-Z, maybe his most infamous thievery besides taking Biggie lyrics, which uh we'll be here for years talking about that. But Jay-Z is someone uh he grew up in hip-hop in the 1980s, probably the 70s because he's been lying about his age for years. But he grew up in the 1980s in that uh, the, the, the launch and the explosion, pause, of hip-hop music when it actually was a culture, the 80s. Oh, beautiful time. Be beautiful time, the 80s, you know, back when Bambada was just having his way with, with hundreds of light-skinned, big-head children. Shout out Hassan Campbell. Poppy was getting popped. But, um... You know, it's amazing. Hassan Campbell, he wants to fight everybody else. He wants to do something to everybody else except the man who put Planet Rock in him. But in that 1980s, and I guess affiliated with the Zulu Nation, was Ice-T. If you're a certain age, you should know where this video is going. Ice-T, who I believe he was born and raised in New Jersey. New Jersey, New York. He goes to California. You know, Ice-T has a hell of a life, you know military uh i guess he really was pimping you know he really he really was pulling off a heist bank heist his life really was grand theft auto 5 if you know you know and um he gets into the music and you know six in the morning you know classic record six in the morning that's basically uh easy e bit that for uh boys in the hood it's the same exact format and uh you know he has you know colors and just classic records you know on and on and on and at one point or another, Ice-T, you know, who, who's someone who's very uh, known for, you know, networking. And he was a bridge to a lot of rappers to the West Coast. Not just New York rappers, but Southern rappers and so on and so forth. Uh, Ice-T, one of the great legends. Iconic. The first one that had pistols in the video and, and females not wearing nothing. If you know, you know. Uh, one, one of my favorite ice T songs and videos is a song and video called High Rollers. Fire! Simple cadence, simple flow, a great story. Look that up, Ice-T High Rollers. And at some point, he gets in contact with 2 Live Crew. And uh, like I said, Ice-T is like the king of networking. So what happened was he gets with Brother Marquise from 2 Live Crew, and they make a record called 99 Problems. Now, the infamous line from 99 Problems is, I got 99 problems and a bitch ain't one. And um, Jay-Z bit this, the same way he bites everything. And you know, the thing about biting, it's bad enough to take. The number one rule of being an MC, a rapper, is you don't steal someone else's style, 
cadence, flow. You don't dress like them well. well all these monkey fans, they don't have any standards, which is one of the reasons why hip hop is not a culture. It's not a culture. In a culture, there are rules, there are standards, there are bylaws, and if you break them, you are removed. Well, there is no culture. You have Eminem disrespecting Manly Mal. This is not a culture. You have the youth who, who are ignorant to the history of this. A culture means you have to know the history of it. You must pay respect to it. This is not a culture. Jay-Z, one of the number one people at breaking all the rules of what a culture would be. He takes the song, he does his version, he keeps the whole 99 pounds, but a B ain't one, and he never shouts out Ice-T, he never acknowledges Ice-T. Ice-T to this day mentions, Jay-Z took the song, never called me once. <laughs> that is some typical nigga shit. Jay-Z took my record. Redid it, never called me once, never asked for, for, never asked for permission, never sent me a, a bumper sticker, a pin, a, a magnet to put on my fridge, nothing. Now, Jay-Z 99 Problems, is that a good song? Yeah, yeah, it's a good song. The video is beautiful, he was getting shot nine times, but um, it is a good song. It's not a great song. No, Ice T 99 Problems. That's a great song. The better song is Ice T song. But I'm sure you have a bunch of man worshipers who are going to be crying in this video and they'll go listen to both and you know they'll favor Jay Z because he's your father. And oh my God, I don't even call him Jay Z, I call him Hove. <laughs> oh God. <sighs> People will, will cry and pander to a grown ass man with a dreadlock weave this jay-z been in the music business for 40 years and he don't have one gray hair how many times he been around puffy you know you never been stressed out jay-z been around puffy dame dash and steve stout for 30 years and he don't have one gray hair dealing with them <laughs> Oh, God. 99 Problems. Ugh. Now, I just stated what I stated about Jay-Z, but, 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 apparently, let's back up the story. I said the original song was Ice-T and Brother Marquise, who's a member of 2 Live Crew. Now, apparently, Brother Marquise was another one of these lost Negroes who climbed his way to Vlad TV, that colonizer, and apparently in the interview, Brother Marquise alleges what I just said about Jay-Z to be the same thing Ice-T did. What I'm saying is, Brother Marquise alleged in his interview that he wrote 99 Problems, and then Ice-T took it from him and didn't give him enough credit. Like, what is with... What? Now, I, I, if you look at this Brother Marquise, I don't really believe him. He looks shysty. He he looked like he be he, he looks like he's outside of a liquor store every Friday night looking for, you know, you got a dollar? Hey, hey young blood, you, you got a few dollars to spare? Like he looked like one of them. Um and, and he need he needs that Craig Mack proactive. But he says that Ice T basically took the song from him. So maybe you can't blame Hove. And with that said, I'm about to hear. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Donate to the Cash App if you have a video request, if you enjoy this content. And that is it. Jay-Z the thief.